so in this presentation we're going to look at information flow diagrams um, because this is uh, something that a lot of people have got wrong um, over the time that I've been teaching it and a lot of it is um, not spending the time to really prepare and, and plan the flow diagram before you actually go in to make it. Um, there are a lot of variations of flow diagrams currently available um, and I think students just need to kind of be aware about what um, we would be looking for specifically within this uh, flow diagram. So I'm just going to give a little example about the types of things that we are looking for so that when you go back and do it uh, in the future then, then you might find it a bit easier. So uh, flow diagram is all about how information flows um, between a number of different points either uh, in a business as a whole or, or across a particular type of service that you're delivering. Um, and very different reasons for this um, but ultimately it's to help the business kind of plan and, and see where maybe they're taking more steps than they need to or where they could streamline in the future um, so an important thing about a flow diagram before you actually go in uh, and rush ahead and make your flow diagram it seems really quite straightforward but you've got to plan this thing out um, if, you know, if you don't do that then the likelihood is that halfway through your flow diagram uh, you'll find that you are missing stuff or that you need to add things in uh, or that maybe you haven't quite got it in the right order and then you have to rearrange everything and it just turns into a bit of a pain really um, whereas if you actually plan this thing beforehand in Word or a text editor it really doesn't matter what editor you use or maybe even on, on the back of an envelope <laughs> uh, you know but it doesn't really matter what you plan it out in as long as you plan it out somewhere and, and then you actually know before you go in to create your flow diagram what you're going to do, what process you're going to take, um, you know, what what order things are going to happen in, and then it makes it much easier to actually plan this thing out. Um, you also need to identify things which are internal within the company. So the things within the company that you know, as a company, you'll have total control over. Uh, well, in theory, anyway. Um, and then you have things which are external which they won't have so much control of. For example, a customer. Um, you, you obviously may have customers that are within the company, for example, uh, if you are uh, um, buying something you know, from within the shop you work with and technically you're, you're within it, but ultimately customers are more than likely to be external and, and you can pretty much assume that they are going to be external um, for these purposes. Also things like uh, banks, very few um, shops and businesses uh, process their own uh, transactions uh, most of them will go through a bank it's ultimately what they're there for um, you know they're, they're all the security system set up and um, you know they will be an external source um, so I just want to kind of give an example of, of a fast food order now this is probably going to be um, easier than than what you are doing for your example for coursework because ultimately um, your coursework needs to be that little bit more in depth um, but this is to just kind of give you an example of um, what you should be doing really before you even kind of set um, out creating your flow diagram so um, as a fast food order you know um, it doesn't really matter what fast food store you're thinking about but um, and, and there will be other things you know you, you could make this more complex than what it really is for example if um, you know, you've got the order there, um, and then if it goes to the kitchen and find out that that stuff isn't there, I mean, I suppose you could make it much more complex than what it is. But actually, um, I, I think for this example, you, you know, you just just streamline it back to what what you should kind of imagine what should happen. Um, so, when when you're ordering fast food you, as a customer, they go and order it at the till, obviously, um, or, or drive through, whatever it might be. Um, and I said, as a customer. Um, you're an external data source there. Okay, the fast food store are not going to give you your food until you pay for it, um, and in fact, they're not even probably going to process it until you pay for it. So, um, that is likely to be done by an external source, likely to be done by a bank, whoever that bank might be. It doesn't really matter. Um, but they will send it out, and the bank will process it and send it back and say yes, it's been approved or not. Um, obviously, if if it doesn't get approved, the whole thing stops there. But again, let's assume that it, it is uh, approved. Um, then the sales um, guys will, will, will process it and um, send it over to the kitchen, where um, presumably the the food is made. 
and okay in theory it might already be made in fast food store but you know let's let's assume that that the food uh, needs to be needs to be made they'll make it and then hand it back to the sales team who will give it to the customer so this should all happen within a couple of minutes of you know it's fast food at the end of the day um and you know as, as a process this is quite a simple process now you'll see bits on there that i've highlighted in, in black these are the things um that form the the bulk of your info um flow diagram so i've seen in the past um people um actually having the information flow as the main things within um this system but actually you you need to have um things like departments and people as um, the main elements of this and then you have flows going between them so um, you know you, you're simply not going to have a, a main item within your information flow as as a bit of information anyway you know it's, it's just not going to happen so you need to pick out the main things parts de departments external entities internal entities within the flow and then your information is going to flow between these two uh, so if you think of maybe college then your um, internal parts within college will be your tutors it will be things like admissions it will be things like um, um, your your um, member I've had, I had a member it will be things like um, yourself it'll be things like your parents um, and yeah so it, it just won't be the actual flow itself it'll be the people it'll be departments um, that within it so you know if, if we uh, have a look at this as an information flow diagram itself so I've, I've highlighted these things in black already so you can see that you've got two external entities here you've got customer and the bank and then within the um, the company itself um, you've got two main items such as sales and kitchen now in within the fast food um, uh, company there are likely to be many many more than this but inside this um, chain of events these are really the only people uh, that matter now you, you may I guess in theory get management involved if uh, the sales people or the customers are, are rude to one another and whatever but oh, that's it. We, we, we're assuming this is going to work okay so um, if we think about the the process that we've just seen the first thing that happens is the customer orders their food okay so that is the first flow the order goes from the customer to the sales team Second thing, sales um, guys will process uh, the payment, uh, which will be going from the sales team to the bank, and then the bank will say yes, it's gone through, or no, it hasn't. Okay, so generally that would be a confirmation, and you, you generally get that on your um, on your little um, processing machine, which I I don't actually know the name of, uh, but it will be a confirmation. It will say approved or, or not approved, or maybe you've paid in cash. But either way, um, the payment needs to be made. After that, the sales will pass on the order to the kitchen who will then prepare uh, your meal. Um, and when ready, they'll send it back to the sales team who will give it back to the customer. So this is I say, quite a, a simple order, uh, but this is the type of, of layout that I would expect for an information flow diagram. You, you may find that as um, your situation will be a little bit more complex than this, that there are more more arrows uh, flowing about it and, and you will need to actually have to plan this thing out because um, you will need to, to lay it out in such a way so that um, it doesn't become overly complex I, I wouldn't put all of the information necessarily um, on the the flows of the arrows so for example I'm happy for students to uh, number the arrows and then list them later so for example where you've got one order you could just have one and then later on you could have a, a list underneath and say number one this is where the order is uh, because you may run out of room that's that's fine I'm happy with that uh, you'll need to ask your tutor whether or not they are happy with that um, this is not a, a data flow diagram where you you actually will highlight the stores of, of the information um, so they, they can get a little bit confusing the names of these flow diagrams in that respect but but we're not looking at that um obviously you'll see that in here we've highlighted um all the internal stuff within a great big box i would expect you guys to do the same uh, and all the external elements outside of that okay um again it's important that you recognize that because you've also got to remember that everything that happens for the customer and for the bank are actually totally out of the business's control 
uh, whereas everything that happens within it uh, are within their control. Um, so like I said, you, the information flow diagrams, uh, they could potentially be very large and very complex. Uh, you've got to read the scenario um, and you've got to literally just go by what is in the scenario and not by um, making all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff up. Um, you know, obviously you, you may find yourself as you're doing this a bit of coursework in a hypothetical situation. So you're you're saying, I imagine that this would happen, but um, don't just add really weird, weird and random stuff in there. Um, the information flow diagrams will help organizations identify where they could streamline and improve services because um, you'll find that there's a lot of businesses out there that will do stuff um, a lot of times and there'll be a lot of data repetition. Um, I obviously speak as someone that's quite experienced in that in, in further education, but um, um, in businesses themselves that will certainly happen as well. Um, and I can't stress enough, you've got to plan this before you actually go in and create it. Um, you know, if you don't plan it, then you are asking for trouble, really, in terms of um, getting the um, the information flow diagram incorrect. Um, you know, that is pretty much like anything in IT. You know, you have to to plan it out and spend the time to do that. You know, it's well worth uh, spending a few minutes, pretty much, with everything that you do, thinking about what you're going to do, um, as it will save you time in the long run. Um, so that's what we're looking for for an information flow diagram. Obviously, if you are unsure about what your tutor wants, you must talk to them. Um, but generally, you know, you don't make it more complex than what it needs to be. Um, generally, only stick to things that that you can actually see. Don't make things up. Um, and yeah, pl plan it out beforehand is are the main points I would take from that. Um, thank you. Bye. -bye.